So we're going to continue with 2.3, and today we're going to talk about writing an equation of a translated parabola. And what that means is a translated parabola is basically the vertex of a parabola is not always at the origin. So if it's not at the origin, we can't use what we've been doing previously. All right. So basically what we're going to use now is this bit of information right here. So if you look at this, we use this when our vertex is somewhere other than 0, 0. So this is, if you look at it, it says where the vertex is at hk. So that means just another point. So if you look at your graph down here, do you notice that the vertex is no longer at 0, 0, but it is somewhere else. We don't necessarily know where it is, but we can always use this form right here. Now it's the same concept as if it's a vertical axis of symmetry, we use this information right here. Okay, so if it's vertical, whether it's going up or down, you notice you still have that vertical axis of symmetry right here. Then if you have a horizontal axis of symmetry right here, down below right here, and then right here, what we do use is this information right here. So this is something that we have to memorize, so this is super important that you put into your notes. So make sure both of these get into your notes. If you want to pause the video, copy it down. It might be good to have these graphs right here so you have something to look at. This right here is the key, though, these guys. So we have a graph here. Now we have to just... Now what we need to do is determine, well, is our vertex at 0, 0? Or is our parabola translated? And now if it's translated, we just have to look at the vertex. If the vertex is in a different spot than 0, 0, so if it's not here, then it is translated. Because remember, translation means that you move it right or up and down. So left and right or up and down. Remember, translated, those are things that we used in the past. So if we look at this, yeah, I can say that this parabola has been translated. So that means that we're going to use the information that we talked about previously, which is this stuff right here. So if we look at this, now we have to determine, is it a vertical axis of symmetry or a horizontal axis of symmetry. So if you look at your graph, you should see that, or you should know that this right here would be your axis of symmetry. So that is your axis of symmetry. So that means that I'm going to use this information right here, down here. I don't have to worry about the vertical axis of symmetry. So we know we're going to use this form. Now this might look very familiar. So if you look at the one that we're so used to with the vertical axis of symmetry, if you look here, this would be your A value, this is your H value, this is your K value. But since we're using the horizontal, if you notice, what changes? The K and the H switch positions. So what we want to do first, and it's no different, is we want to find the vertex. Well, what is the vertex? We know the vertex is, in any type of vertex form, it is H, K. So let's go ahead and find the vertex. Let's write it in that form. So looking at it, I can see that the vertex is, it looks like it's, it goes by 2, so it's 6, 2. So go ahead and write that down, 6, 2. Now what you want to do with that information is let's plug it back in. Okay, so I know that the K value, now remember the K value is 2, square that, and the H value was 6. Now what we need to figure out, we need to figure out the A value. This right here is our A value. I need to figure this out. I know it's not 1 over 4 times P. We actually have to find that value, that P value. Well, how do we do that? Well, there's a few ways we can do it. I'll show you one way. Let's look at the focus. We know what the focus is. If we look at the focus point, we know that the focus is 10, 2. So let's write that down. The focus is 10, Two. Well, what do we know about the focus? We need to think back up here. What do we know about the focus? Now, if you look at this, I only care about the x value. Well, what is the x value? The x value is h plus p. I already know what the k value is. The k value was 2 of the focus. We don't need to know that right now. We're trying to find that p. So what you want to do is you want to go ahead and say h plus p equals 10. So if you can see that. We know that this position right here, this guy, equals this guy. Now, you notice I have two variables. Well, how do I get rid of one of those variables? Well, I know 
what the H is. Remember, we figured out what the H was. It was 6. It was 6. So all you have to do is plug that back in and do 6 plus P equals 10. Well, if you solve that or simplify that, you would get P equals 4. Okay, all I did was simplify this guy right here. Once you simplify that, you get P equals 4. Well, now what do you do with that 4? What do I do with that? Well, before I get that, I'm just going to erase a few things. So we know the P value equals 4 from our calculations. So all we have to do now is take that and plug it into our A value. Remember, the whole thing, 1 over 4 times P is our A value. So I take that and just plug it back in. So this right here is my A value, 1 over 16. So my equation, just have to rewrite it, is 1 over 16, y minus 2, squared plus 6. So a lot of different steps to this, but rewind this, go through it, make sure you understand it. I know it's a little bit different because we're not used to seeing x equals something. So just know that it's not a function, but it is still a parabola, okay? So please come up with a HOT question, an example, or a confusion question. And when you come in, if you have any questions regarding this, let me know so we can go over it together individually. Thank you, and have a good day, good morning, good evening, or good night.